One of the reasons I enjoy um, what I do in a very serious way is that I keep learning. Almost every single morning that I host this program, I learn something new. And I'm learning something again this morning, because today is celebrated as World Polar Day. I didn't know that. Uh, but that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. I'm here to discuss this infectious disease as past president of the Rotary Club of Portmore and the University of the West Indies is former head of the micro biology department, Professor John Lindo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Welcome again to Smile Jamaica. Here's what I'm learning, that I think this thing was eradicated a long time ago. What is polio in but the first place? Before I respond to that, I'm the past president of Rotary Club of New Kingston. New Kingston. Yes. Sorry about uh, that, sir. That's, that's fine, because Rotary is, we're all in, right. in, in the eradication of polio. So poliomyelitis, which we commonly call polio, is a, is a viral infection called, caused by the, the, the polio virus. Now, this is a virus which is transmitted from one human to another, what we call fecal orally. Basically, the, the virus is in, in, the, in the intestines, passes out in the stool, classically contaminates water, and other persons get infected. Um, so, and, and it has this attraction to the nervous system, so that is why you get this paralysis from polio okay. when you get infected. The, only, the other thing I learned is that the only place I'm, apparently it's in now that we know of for sure is Afghanistan and Pakistan, I'm told. If that is so, why are we concerned? So we, we started polio eradication in a very big way in 1988, I think it was, mm. when we had 350,000 cases. And in Jamaica? No, no, oh. globally. So we have been trying to you know, reduce our polio numbers to zero cases. And polio, of course, affects both the children under five years old. And once there's anybody in the world who is infected, all of us are, remain at risk. Okay. So Rotary and our partners, especially the, the, the Bill Gates Foundation, the Bell and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the World Health Organization, our aim is to reduce those numbers to zero. And you're right, right now we, we are, um, there are active cases in, in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Last year we, we were worried about Nigeria. We are very pleased to see that we haven't had any cases. We cannot declare them polio free yet because it takes quite a lot of resources to make sure we get that last case. Okay. It's very important to get that last case. Um, it says unless we eradicate polio within 10 years, as many as 200,000 new cases could occur around the world each year? So th that is an estimate based on that's an estimate based on how polio can spread yeah. across this 10-year period. Mm -hmm. um, because one polio case can, of course, lead to many. Mm. Um, there's a concept in epidemiology called it R0, which you can read up afterwards. Show up, yeah, show up. Yeah, but, um, so, so, so the, the, that's a kind of rough estimate of what we'll get if we don't end polio within 10 years. Yeah. So what will happen with those 200,000 cases, we don't know. I mean, that, that multiplies. Mm -hmm. I can't get it from you. you there, the classical way to get it is through contaminated water. But there's some, there are cases, for example, in daycare centers where kids with contaminated toys and so okay. on. So one kid will pass it on to another. Um, but classically, um, close contact is not the classical way. I ask the question because what happens if someone came from Afghanistan and Pakistan and had polio? How would it be transmitted to any one of us? The important thing for us to remember and every country to remember is to keep our vaccination rates up. Right. Um, and we have problems with vaccination rates, vaccination coverage, not so much in this country, but there, there, there are some countries where there, there are big anti-vaccine movements. So religion, had, religion. Yes, for religious reasons. So we have as outbreaks of measles in the United States, um, which can afford as many vaccines as they can. So the, the idea is to get maximum va vaccine coverage for the population. So it's a population approach, not a kind of individual approach. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Paho is today celebrating 25 years of us being certified polio free yes. in the Caribbean and the wider Americas. Um, I know we're talking about a concern 
Are we really concerned that it will it will come back to this region? We are concerned with all infectious agents. Okay. For example, we have eradicated measles from the Americas. However, we are on high alert for measles all the time. So we call them class one notifiable diseases. So mm -hmm. once a, a, a physician or healthcare worker suspects that this is a possible case of polio, or possible case of measles, they must report this to the public health authorities for immediate action. Um, so, so we are on high alert for all these infectious agents, even though, so we can't just jump up and down and say, okay, we haven't seen a polio case and we have won the battle. Yeah. Battle is not won until that last kid in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. in Pakistan, is, is, poli is polio free. It's totally eradicated in the same way we don't worry about smallpox anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you hear and read that you get vaccinated for measles and mumps and all kind of thing. I never hear anybody say me get vaccinated for polio. You get that before you leave hospital as a little kid? Or? I'm trying to remember the schedule um, and uh, Dr. Uh, Dawkins just left. Maybe well, that wasn't introduced polar. until maybe the 80s. So, no, no, no. Polio vaccines have been around a very long time. Okay. Um, the, 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 the approach to vaccination has changed as we, as we get rid of... Uh, there are three um, types of polio, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. so easy to remember. Mm -hmm. um, but the, what we have now is the... the, the the easiest way is the oral polio vaccine. So Rotary has been very instrumental in getting this vaccine to children um, across the world and, and getting it cool, get it, get it to them cold, because it's very important yeah. that it's not denatured by heat. Right. Um, I don't remember the schedule, but I know that at least at two years old, I think, and four years old, and maybe six, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, but there's a schedule at the ministry. So, in yes. other words, we... we, we, you we have, you have it, I can assure you, yeah. you have been vaccinated. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yes, it used to be the injection, and then they changed yeah. to the drops, which yes. was much, much better. Because easier. you can get it as an adult. It's you can get polio as an adult, uh, and, and it can be very debilitating. You'll remember, um, you may have seen old photographs of persons in hospital in these... Um, compression chambers, right. the, the old iron lung, they used to call them. And you just have to live in there because you, you're, you, you, you're, you cannot breathe on your own. And these machines would breathe for you. Yeah. Um, so that is a very expensive way to deal with an epidemic, to deal with a, an infectious disease yeah. when you could take a vaccine which costs 15 US cents. Yeah, I remember the last time you were here, I told you the story of my brother yes. going to another country with an all-schools team and the goalkeeper one of the goalkeepers on that team came back and it uh, was found later on that he had polio. Yes. And never kept again. Yes. Um, but yeah. I, I've never heard of a, a case in Jamaica outside of that. Well, there are, there are about 70 persons in Jamaica now who were affected by polio. Um, you're young, but if you ask an older person, they will, they will tell you about the epidemics of the 1950s, for example. And there are still persons here. Our club is being addressed this morning by a polio survivor um, who, who, who is walking with assistance and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned this morning, you're having your annual world greatest meal yes. breakfast. Um, it's a fundraiser. Tell us a little bit about that. So, you know, across the globe, Rotary Clubs will put on different fundraisers. Mm -hmm. Ours is called World's Greatest Meal. Um, it's, we, we normally meet on a Friday morning, but we have shifted it to, to coincide with polio. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I'm not there, and they're, they're charging extra for the breakfast. And <laughs> yes, they're charging extra for the same food. Maybe not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's an extra charge and so on. And there will be special fundraising from the members. Mm -hmm. This will be um, donated um, to, 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 to the end polio uh, effort, mm -hmm. um, which, which people can, anybody can donate to at uh, end polio dot org slash donate um, you can put on your tax records it is a public good and um, it is it is one of the things you can do for the health of this globe so yep. I encourage everybody to to go to Rotary and donate yeah. it yeah. says initial symptoms of polio include fever fatigue headache vomiting stiffness in the neck and pain in the limbs mm -hmm. which probably covers some other um, yes 
some other diseases and, and problems. That is an interesting thing about viral infections. If you see a patient who has, was just con seroconverted with HIV or a patient with chikungunya, dengue, Zika, it could, they yeah. look the same. Right. Sometimes it's difficult to tell them apart, which is why, you know, laboratory confirmation is so, so important. Yeah, man. All right. It's Thanks for coming. It can be very general. Yeah. Thanks, Professor. And Thanks. All right. Um, That's it for 10 minutes to your health. <laughs> yep. Join us next week, Thursday, when we'll do it again. Professor John Linda, past president of the Rotary Club of New Kingston. Sure. And the <laughs> University of the West Indies, former head of the microbiology department. We wrap things up right after the break.